Greetings gamers. Thanks for checking out my channel in this video. This is going to be my 3.21 League Diary video. So what this video is going to be is basically me explaining my goals for the league, what build I played in the league, did I achieve my goals, how I felt about the league overall, and just sort of a general blog style video about my experiences in the 3.21 patch for Path of Exile. So this league, it was the Crucible League, and my goal for this league coming into it at the very start was to farm feared invitations to try and get a raw mirror drop. So as a result, my plans going into the league were I need a build that is capable of clearing feared so that means all of the bosses to get a feared invite as well as then the feared invitation itself and preferably at very high quantities or difficulties so farming 100 plus quant or rarity uh, feared invites obviously requires a pretty excellent bossing build and so that's what i have constructed this is an explosive trap saboteur this is basically the build that i played all league long and it's very good. Um, there's no way to put it other than that. So this build, I played Saboteur. Let me first start off here. So I played Saboteur. Um, a lot of people were very low on Saboteur, especially for traps coming into the league. But I saw this as a huge opportunity. And in fact, that I thought it was even better. The reason is because Saboteur gets a lot more AoE with the new setup now. And AoE is very important for explosive trap in the sense that I have enough where I can run conch, conch effect even while mapping and AoE never feels like a problem because AoE scales the width that explosive trap will lay its explosion so you get less overlap but this is negated by concentrated effect but the explosions are still big enough where I can map effectively. On top of that explosive trap doesn't have big individual hits Instead, it's got a lot of smaller hits with the multiple explosions. So as a result, or here, let me show it here. So there's multiple explosions, 10 smaller explosions. So that means the individual hits for explosive tra trap are not actually that big. But we need to apply alternate ailments with leadership's price. And so things like the chance for 50% more area damage or my Forbidden Flesh and Flame for a chance to get more Chaos damage on hit. These actually end up being very good because even on uber bosses, I'm able to apply full 6% brittles and things like that. And that's something that without leadership's price with just Secrets of Suffering is just not possible because you need to split your elemental damage. Your initial hits are not very big anyways. And as a result, you don't get very strong alternate ailments. So the concept here is leadership's price. I can scale everything into fire damage and through Herald of Ash for the more spell fire damage. And as a result, the build does some insane DPS. The gear that this character have has is very mid like you can see this is only a plus one shield for skills this is a plus two wand but i mean my modifiers that prefix fire damage is pretty whack uh my global crit multi on the suffix is pretty whack in general my gear is nothing insane right like this is basically i cap my resistances i get life i get my fire conversion and some trap throwing speed but that's about all but the end result is the build still feels really good. So here I'll just, you know, show you a bit of mapping. This is a tier 16, just basically Alk and Go. And the build is mediocre for mapping, right? Like I'm not clearing full screens instantly over and over, but it's enough where I can just run through. I'm really tanky because I have both grace and determination. I have block, I have some spell suppression, and as a result, you just go through and kind of blast everything. Now let me see if I can find the boss room to just show you the DPS in a bossing scenario. This map doesn't have any sort of boss life or anything on it, so keep that in mind with the DPS check I'll do. Where is this thing? But this has been more than capable as a mapping build. Like, obviously it's not designed for mapping or super strong at mapping but it more than does the trick. So there's just a little demo of the build in action overall. 
basically I run around, throw grenades, and it does big damage. So let me talk a little bit about how the build functions as a whole. The idea is that explosive trap, where is it? Here we go. Explosive trap, secrets of suffering, everything goes through one element fire so that Herald of Ash can scale a lot, and I can get this circle of anguish ring to scale my Herald of Ash damage even more. And then we just basically scale it like any other trap where we get lots of crit, we get lots of damage, we get lots of skill levels, and bada bing bada boom, we clear maps. Some of the tech for the build is pretty outdated, like I'm using Determination Grace. I think, frankly, these days you don't need both. Um, as well as, in general, this build tries to go a bit too heavy on auras. Like, really, I could be dropping some of them, but it is what it is. The character was more than capable of clearing 7 out of 7 Ubers this league, and even doing a bunch of them deathless. Like, I've done Uber Shaper, Maven Witnessed, multiple times deathless on this character. And that's actually where I really want to get started in terms of talking about my goals and then how the league felt overall. So I started out with that goal I talked about of farming feared invites for a raw mirror drop. But then I started to get into it and I realized just how much of an undertaking that was because to farm one single feared invite is about a three div investment or at least it was when I was really into it. You have to buy a Cortex, you have to buy a Cheyula Breachstone, you have to buy a lot of expensive keys that then start to add up, and with Feared, you're basically relying on a couple big drops to get paid. So, like, you're looking for Bottled Faith drops, you're looking for those kind of big bossing drops. You're looking for... Where do I have it... Skin of the Lords that I have in here somewhere, but I don't know right now. Oh, well. Um, you're looking for Skin of the Lords. You're looking for Bottled Fates. You're looking for big ticket items, basically, from Feared Invites. And the result is that unless you have a ton of money sitting around to basically be spamming your Feared Invites and have so much money that you can keep doing Feared Invites while you are waiting for your big ticket items to sell, then the result is that you end up stalling and have to kind of go back to just general mapping. And that ended up being a bit of a buzzkill for me because this is a bossing build and I didn't really care to make a full-on mapping build for in between or just try to like trade flip items. That's not really something I find very enjoyable. So I instead I transitioned my goal from farming tons of feared invites which i still did a good chunk of i did about 20 feared invites on this character so you know nothing compared to the people that are farming 500 plus in a league but still i would say a good sizable amount 20 plus feared invites 10 or so at over 100 percent quant just basically proved to myself that yes this build is more than capable of doing that farm but instead what i did is i saw it to clear 7s7 seven seven uber bosses. That was my new goal that I instead swapped to because feared invites weren't really doing it for me. And this build delivered on that front too. In fact, it delivered too well. And that's sort of where I'm going to get into how I felt about the league. And my general feeling overall is that it's way too easy to get a really strong character right now. And what do I mean by that? Well, this character, despite going 7s7, seven is not spell suppression capped. It's not chaos resist capped. It doesn't have very much block chance. It has 5,000 life grace determination, but overall what I'm trying to express here is that this character is not actually that good, but it is very strong because you can get so much from the passive tree now, and just the game kind of hands you so much free power right now. Chance to suppress spell damage is lucky. I took this wheel, Mage Bane, and that Mastery, and that is all of the suppression that I have ever needed for the League to clear 7 out of 7 Ubers. I have no spell suppression on gear, and it was never a problem. Like I say, I've done every Uber boss in the game, and I have not needed to cap my spell suppression. Why? Like, just why? Next piece on this sort of line is nowadays and I'll talk about this a little bit more or I'll show examples a bit more when I get into a later part of the video every character these days can get 80% all resists fairly easily because of a combination of stuff on the passive tree as well as things like eldritch implicits again like this is just too much I think 
I know that the game has power crept over time in the sense that monsters are a lot stronger, but I don't think most builds being able to get 80% all resist pretty effortlessly is a big deal. Not that they really need it. Again, like, you know, mine are not on that sort of level, but I'll show characters that are in a bit. This character, all that to say, this character is not optimized. He's not push to the full level or to the highest potential of this character archetype. I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that this character could have its damage doubled and its EHP improved by about 50% and it would not cost more than 30 divines. It's just that I'm not a very gear motivated player and it could already do the full 7 out of 7 ubers so for me personally I have no reason to push it to that level. And that's kind of how I feel overall about the game right now, is that every league we're getting some new shiny tools like Crucible, right? So Crucible, I didn't really love it because as I say, I'm not really a gear person. I'm not really motivated by crafting. So I just did some basics on my gear. I got some life. I got some extra block chance. On my wand, I got a bit of conversion and I got some spell crit. Nothing more, nothing less. But the mods for Crucible can be really insane, right? Like you can get Rampage on a weapon in Crucible. You can just really push your character to new heights. And that combined with the mastery system means that just, I'm finding the game too easy right now. And League mechanic feeling kind of weak for gameplay aside, I think everyone feels this way about Crucible. Even if you like making the trees, the actual Crucible mechanic in maps is pretty, you know, it's pretty lackluster. But this is the first league I've ever felt the need to play hardcore solo cell found because just it wasn't really a vibe playing trade because I didn't have to cap my spell suppression to clear all ubers. And I know that that's kind of, you know, me being a bit hyperbolic, but it's still sort of how I feel. So these are the characters that have died in hardcore solo cell found this league. So I'll go to this one first. This is an Exsanguinate Scion with, as you can tell, very garbage gear. Um, 78 or 79 for all resistances. This is just thanks to, on the passive tree, getting wheels like this. Having the masteries for... Oh, this one actually doesn't have for life and mana. The armor masteries for elemental resistances. The splitting steel character I'll go to next is a bit of a better example. But I played this build. Managed to get things like... 94% chance to suppress spell damage, that's lucky, with 53% damage reduction, 79 to 78 for resistances, etc. And this character has a tabula. Like, look at this gear and tell me that this should be possible. These boots are the only thing that I would actually consider an okay piece of gear. Everything else is garbage. But that's all I needed because there is just so much base power in the passive tree this patch that you don't really need all that stuff. This character is a little bit better geared. Let me go to this splitting steel character. On here, 80% all resist. Why? Because I'm getting 2% here, 3% here, 4% here, and then the last 5% is made up of like the individual lightning node, this individual fire node, and this individual cold node over here. 80% all resistances just from the passive tree. That's ridiculous. That's so strong. Again, 71 spell suppression chance, 53% reduced damage on spell suppression, and lucky. In hardcore, this can be a bit of an issue. It wasn't for this character. It died to poison damage because, I mean, look at that chaos resistance. But even that could have been solved by gear with getting some new rings. Overall, what I'm trying to say is that the base power level of characters is really high with because of the new changes to the mastery tree. And every league now, we're doing these kind of borrowed power concepts. In Crucible, we've got the Crucible trees. In Sanctum, we have the relics. And I think as a concept, that's completely fine. I think that those items are good ways to prevent power creep from happening. Because let's face it, the game is very power crep these days. But... I also think that if we're going to power creep it at that top end, we shouldn't do so in the middle too, because what happens is just your character is solved by the time you're in yellow maps. Like for me on my characters this league, the only difference between yellow and red maps is my damage number went up. That was it. And that was a bit boring. 
that's why I started playing hardcore solo self found because you know it started to be exciting that oh this isn't even gonna have it because it's not actually the hardcore league Let me go here but I started playing hardcore solo self found because it started to be excited you know when I could get oh it's not in here where is it whatever I can't seem to find it right now but I got a cane of Kamulamak or whatever the hell that thing oh here we go the cane of Kulamak from Syndicate and I got a really good fire one you know fire damage fire multi attributes and so I was like oh you know I'll start playing an ignite build or a fire dot build because I got this really good drop and because I I have one good unique item then I can make a build around it. Rares are tough to get in Hardcore Solo Cell Found, at least rares in the same way getting them in trade is. So that is how I found my joy this league is playing that Hardcore Solo Cell Found. And I actually managed to get, this is the first league I've ever actually played Hardcore Solo Cell Found. The first league I've ever beaten the Axe in Hardcore Solo Cell Found. And I've got one of the Void Stones already, which I think is a testament to how the game gives you so much for free. Because if I can get a void stone on this exsanguinate scion that's using a tabula and like item level 15 wands then i think there needs to be a conversation about getting too much for free in the game this build should not be capable of clearing void stones but it is and i'll admit you know i'm getting better and better every league i play a lot i'm a bit of a sweat at this game so you know that's not necessarily going to be possible for everyone but it does make me worry for the future of this game basically losing that depth of progression because why do you need to complete a character or do more on a character if it's already solved and just the DPS number goes up? That's not very motivating to me, but I'm sure it's different for others. Overall, this league, despite my you know complaints or explaining my frustrations with the current balance of the game, I had a great time. Clearing Uber bosses is easily the best content that I've ever done in the game. I think it, you know, for me, I'm a player that likes boss and content. I'm not very crafting or item motivated. I would rather do hard fights and enjoyable boss fights than, you know, just blast T16 maps for the lightning strike character. Been there, done that. You know, it was fun for a league, but, you know, I'm over it. So this league was still very fun. Um, really enjoyed the kind of push for those uber bosses really enjoyed farming uber bosses and feared invites that to me is my happy place and i did that this league i was able to do that no problem that was great i hope next league that it's a little bit harder to do that because frankly you know i want my uber bosses to be a bit more of a challenge They're, they should be ubers right so thanks for watching this video hope you enjoyed it looking forward to the next league or i guess even today it is the early release of Diablo 4 today. I will be playing a bunch of that. I've never actually played a Diablo game before, so I'm really looking forward to it. I'm going in about as blind as possible. I've tried to avoid any sort of YouTube content or information about the game because I just want to go in with like kind of my experience that isn't jaded by internet takes or influencers. So that is going to be my, what I'm going to be doing over the next little while. When I come back for the next league, I think my goal is either going to be A, Clear 7s7 on a less strong bossing character. I'm kind of cooking up a Fire Sunder build right now that I think would be a cool little showcase because everyone seems to think slams are dead when in fact they are alive and well. And so I'll maybe try to clear 7s7 Ubers on a weaker build or something along those lines. Maybe I'll try to do Simulacrum 30 for the first time because that's actually the only content, aspirational content I have not completed at this point in the game. Not really sure, gonna make a, you know, that's gonna maybe be a game time decision. But either way, I look forward to the next one. I hope you do too. Share your experiences with this Path of Exile League in the comments, what you played, what you thought of the league, and did you achieve your goals? And have a good one. Take care.